Welcome back, everybody. Kathy Arbor here, and today we're going to be doing some stacking snowman. <laughs> but they have a mission. Mission. They're going to put a star on top of a Christmas tree. So hope you'll join along. Uh, there is a printable for this one, and it's available to all my Patreon and my YouTube members. And you, if you're interested, um, it is as low as $2.99 a month, and you get all of the downloads from the past two years. So if you want to check that out, you can just press that Join button or go on to my channel page, and you will see in the uh, top right corner of the banner, um, Patreon, and you can just click on that and it'll take you to my channel. Uh, I will put links down below after this stream is done. So I hope you're having a great day today. It is uh, freezing rain here today, but you, you got no choice. You can't pick your weather. <laughs> So I am glad I have my studio and I can put my fireplace on and just have a nice cozy session with you guys. So I thought I'd show you what we did on Tuesday. Uh, we did this cute little card. I think it's cute. So this is a stamp that I had. Um, I don't even know who makes it. My stamps are ancient. And the, um, the little groom is having, or gnome, sorry, I don't know, I keep saying groom, <laughs> uh, is having uh, a glass of wine and enjoying themselves. So I haven't put anything inside. It could be just used as a place to uh, write a little letter to somebody. But it's a cute idea. It doesn't have to be perfect. And there is a traceable for this one also. If you go into my community page, not all the traceables are just for members. So you can go in my community page and um, scroll down and it'll show you which ones are for the public. Um, what we did last week, let's see, was this one. It was cute. So that was the little snow globe. Because um, I live in a snow globe. <laughs> uh, my little village here gets hit really good with snow in every winter. So um, the saying for this town is we live in a snow globe. So I thought it was fitting. <laughs> and this is my um, file folder accordion style book. And this is... All the paintings, well, not all of them, most of them, I have done all of these this past year. And um, New Year's Eve, there's going to be a streamathon, and I'll be putting that in uh, the description or on my community page probably this week. And it'll give you the uh, links to all the channels that are participating. And it will start uh, New Year's Eve, I believe. 5 30 in the morning and right through till I think six o'clock in the morning New Year's Day so you'll have something to watch. Uh, I am going to paint on this. This is just scrapbook paper. I uh, gotta make a call but I'm here. Okay no problem Lori. Uh, this is scrapbook paper. Uh, it's old. So I can't tell you who it was made from. Um, I like this type of scrapbook paper for painting on. It does have a little bit of texture, if you can see, almost like a canvas texture. And I have already put um, a coat of matte medium on, and I just use this gel matte medium. And I want to use matte. I prefer matte over uh, glossy. Hey Devin, good to see you. And this kind of a grayish, it's almost got a green hue to it, but I thought it would be cool for a night sky. And what we're going to do is this cute little C4 
scenery of stackable snowmen. Now this is my own design. Uh, most of the ones I do are my own design or um, photographs that I change up in some way. So I like this one. <laughs> Now, the one that you download will not have the background trees or the moon. So if you want to put a moon in, you can. You don't have to, but I, I just thought it would be cute with a moon in it. You could also put whatever background you want. You could find a scenery from a scrapbook paper and use the scenery from that scrapbook paper and just put these guys on top. Hey, see, good to see you. So, yeah, these guys are really working hard. <laughs> I like putting expressions on my um, people or her characters. So, like, he's holding his breath. He's almost done. He's got so much weight on him. And this guy's like, what the heck are we doing? Get off, hurry up. <laughs> and then he, this one is like squinting because he's uh, just at the maximum point before he's going to let go. <laughs> and there's the guy that's putting the little star on the Christmas tree. <laughs> I thought they were cute. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to put the snowman and everything on yet. I want to put the background on first. And then I will um, transfer the snowman and the tree and the moon wherever I want it and the hills. So there won't be a whole lot of uh, painting in the background with this one because I'm going to use this background. And... I'm going to probably uh, do a night scene because it's dark. I like the night scene. And I'm going to put a moon in and I'm going to have uh, some hills down here. So like this, the way I did this. And then I'm going to put the background trees in uh, first uh, over the moon. And then I'll do the snowman and the tree. So you kind of work from your the back, far furthest back that you can and work towards you. So the background, well, I already have because it's dark. So I can put the moon in and maybe a glow around the moon. And you can look up uh, different um, pictures for that. Go on uh, it, Google. I happen to have one. I'm, I thought about using this, but it's the moon's too low. And this was from Stamparia, I believe. Not sure which one it was. But I really like the moon and the way they did the glow. So I'm probably going to use this as a reference to paint. And I like doing this. Uh, where you take different pictures from different photographs or papers or paintings even, whatever, and use those specific things that you like in them to have as a reference for your own piece. So it's like putting a bunch of different paintings and photographs together to make your own. So let's put this background in. So I want to put maybe a little bit of a darker bottom area um, or maybe around the edges might be a little bit darker so I'm going to use acrylic paint and I have uh, I have some let's use artist grade for a change I know I've had a few people uh, asking about artist grade and the main reason why I usually use the craft paint is because it doesn't stick when you close a book. Now I will have to put some type of maybe matte medium on it or um, a wax, a rub a wax over it so it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, a snowman catapult. <laughs> 
so I'm going to use some, um, I've got different brands here. I have Amsterdam, I have um, Liquitex Basics. Let's see, this one is Ivory Black. Let's see. Um, I have Golden. Um, I want, I think I want Payne's Gray. A bit of Payne's Gray on my, I really like Payne's Gray when you're doing snow. And I also like a little bit of purple when you do snow. Or um, another good one would be like a phthalo blue and a little black to it. So we're going to put some black on there. This is lamp black. And white. And I have, let's see, white in here somewhere. Maybe I'll have to use the here we go. Some white. You can use also, if you don't have a white, you could also use gesso. I do that quite often, especially when I'm using the craft paint. And I'll be using a variety of brushes. Uh, I like to use a lot of flats and rounds. Sometimes I use angles too for a little bit more of the detailed areas, small angles. Um, different brushes for different uh, techniques too. So I want a little bit of a snow effect. So I'm going to use some white. I don't want my snow to be white white it's it's nighttime and a lot of times your snow will look more on the bluish or purpley blue side when you're um, painting a night scene so i have some white here so i'm just gonna scoop some of that and then the paint's gray i'm just gonna dip my brush in that paint's gray well, this one's a little bit on the uh, gray side. So let's add a little blue to that. Or let's see if I have another Payne's Gray. I want more of a bluey Payne's Gray. Okay, I've got some uh, anthro chrome blue which I can mix with that it's a beautiful blue I really like this blue but if you can if you have a Payne's gray that's a little more on the blue side then use that so I'm going to put a little bit of blue in there to blue that up A good blue and I'm, I'm gonna put in let's take this off for a minute so I'm gonna put in the snow line and it's got a little bit of a slope to it you can do yours however you want and mine's about a third of the way down you don't want to put it halfway because it's not as interesting if you put it dead in the center um, it's more pleasing to the eye if it's on a third or a quarter so we'll do and this paper has a bit of a tooth to it so that's nice because it will kind of look like it's on um, a bit of uh, canvas almost got a canvas look to it which is kind of cool and I'm just going to put a base coat over it and I'm not going to worry if some of that dark color from the background shows through because sometimes that will help you it'll give you dips in your um, 
your snow banks or uh, holes from people trudging through the snow, that type of thing. So gives you areas where there would be dips in your snow. And you, you want that because your most snow that you see won't be pristine looking unless it's a fresh blizzard and nobody's been out yet. <laughs> Usually you'll see tracks of some sort from animals or people, or this case, snowmen. Yep, they move. That's what my story is. These guys move along. Have you ever seen the uh, Christmas Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer with Frosty the Snowman? And you see him sliding through the snow. <laughs> Okay, so just a simple base coat. That's all you want. Okay, now I'm going to put in my moon. So it's going to be a fairly large moon that I want. So if you've got a cup or a bottle or something that's the right size for your um moon let's see what do i have here or if you have a tool that you can use let's see here's okay i can use this i think that's probably yep right exactly and it was about right here i had it so that will be good enough. Okay, so I'm going to take a piece of, if you have chalk or pastel, um, I would use that. And then you can erase it if it's not in the right spot. I'm just going to get a piece of pastel. I'm just going to put in my moon. There's my moon. Okay, and where's that paper? This moon is kind of dark, more dark around the bottom part here. And then it's lighter on the top. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm going to use a lighter version of that gray as I work it towards me. So we want to make a little bit of a gray color. So I can take that white that I have here. And I can make a nice gray out of that. This gray or black that I put out is almost on the verge of not being good anymore. It's kind of lumpy. So that's not good. Let's put a little bit of this in. Okay, so that's a good gray. And I'm just going to cover this kind of a mid-gray color. So this should work. And just try and get as close to the line as you can. You can always erase it because it's pastel. So you don't have to worry about covering it necessarily. Whereas if you had a colored pencil or graphite you might want to cover it try and get as close around as you can
Okay. And just nice coat. Hey, Lori. All right. So there's the first part of our moon. So I want to make it a little bit darker down in here. So I'm going to add a little bit more black to that mix. I'm just going to take this one on the one side here. Okay. And just on this one side, it can be a little bit darker. So I don't have to wait for this to dry unless it's almost dry then don't paint on it because you can lift the paint and just blend it into the center just want a little bit darker maybe Could be it doesn't have to be uh, like smooth because it's the moon. <laughs> and we're gonna put more paint on this. Okay. Now, I'm going to dry that. Take that heat gun out. You want it dry when you're going to paint back over top of it. Because if you try and paint on it when it's almost dry, it will reactivate that paint underneath and lift it. And you'll end up with a mess. All right. Now let's put a little bit of white on that again. So I'm going to add a little bit of white here. Nope. Way to go. I put my beading over that, thank goodness, because I wouldn't have gotten that up. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of this white to that gray mix. I want it a little bit lighter than what it was. Okay. Cool. So it's a little bit lighter gray around the edge here. So we can get a either use you know, the tip of your like the corner of your brush, or you can use a, a round brush to do this. So I want it a little bit I'm just lightly going I'm not uh, pressing very hard. And we'll put some nice uh, what would you call it glow I guess around it too. And we can go in here. Let's put some wigglies 
some big areas that are more white than others. And then a little bit whiter. And the light colors are more on the top portion than the bottom portion. Okay, we'll just smooth a little bit of that out, a little bit. Okay, and then we'll dry that up. So I want to get all the glow in and that type of thing. The stars, if you're going to have stars, put those in. Uh, clouds, if you want clouds, you can put those in. Before you put on the snowman and the tree. Right now we want to put that kind of glowish thing in. Um, I like using a little bit of a stiffer brush when you do this. If you have what they call a scruffy brush uh, or a deer foot stippler will do. Let's see what I got here. Mm. I know I have smaller brushes in here somewhere. I got a ton of brushes, guys. I want a scruffy one, though. There's one. I think this one will work. Let's see. Get another one. Maybe that one. That's too small. Uh, hmm. Where did my gear stipplers go? Too many brushes. I had a smaller one like this. This is good too. Where did that go? Sorry. Sorry, don't know where I put it. Huh. I guess I'll have to use this one. Although this is kind of stiff, I could probably Well, let's try this one. This is a bigger deer foot stippler. We'll see if it works or not. If it doesn't, we'll have to switch. Oh, actually, I got this one here. It's a little, yeah, this one's a little stiffer. And what you want to do is get some of that white. Don't wet your brush, though. And just put it on the end of your and dab and pounce off. You don't want a lot of paint. And I'm going to start in the white area and work my way out. 
and I want the moon, and I'm just lightly swirling. You want the moon to kind of have a foggy look to it. And then go along the edge. You just have to make sure that you don't have a lot of paint on your brush. And look, do it. Do it lightly. Don't press down too hard. And be patient. It's kind of like uh, the way you guys do uh, your inks from your ink pad when you're inking edges basically the same concept but you're using paint just keep going till you got the right amount on and it should be all the way around the whole moon I'm going to just bring it out slightly. So I've hardly got any paint on my brush. And I'm just going around in circles. Just gives you this really nice glow. can wipe that off. And I'm going to take a uh, smaller brush and just going to, got any edges that you want to fix, you can fix those up now. So the same white, but have a little bit brighter white along the edge here on the top part. I'm just going to turn it around so I can, it's easier. There's a little bit of a bump there. It's not bad. Okay. 
that's the first part. Now, if we want um, snow, you can put snow on there. Uh, I think I'm probably going to wait until I've got the snowman on and put bigger flakes down. But you, you do what you want to do. Um, I'm just looking at it through the monitor. Sometimes if you look at it, put it up to a, a mirror or if you're using your camera, you can look at it on your monitor. You can view it in a different way. It's almost like having new eyes because you'll see things if you look at it through a different way. So mirror or, or whatever. And you'll notice things that you might want to fix or mm, maybe it's not enough color, whatever. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to add a few more lighter areas in the snow. So the snow would be getting lighter. This would be more or less your kind of your shadow color um, in between, I guess you could say. Now you can use uh, the same brush you did the mist around if you want, or you could use a smaller brush. It's up to you. Um, the moon would be shining on the tops of the snow, so you might have a little bit of a, a glow from the moon on top of the snow. So you can put a little bit of a edge on your snow. You can make some areas a little thicker. It doesn't have to be all the same width. And that'll give a nice little bit of a snow look. And then if you want hills, you can put hills in. Uh, let's see. Do I have any hills on there? I don't think so. Oh, um, let's see. Maybe to have a little bit of a dip in the snow here. Just blend it in, the edge in. A little bit of water on your brush. I'm not going to get too crazy because I want to put a bunch of trees in. So trees can be done with your, your stiffer brush also. So if you have a bristle brush, that, that would be great. Or uh, let's see, some people like using uh, fan brushes, like a bristle fan brush to, to do this. You could also get just a, one of those really cheap, uh brushes you get from your home depot store for um i think they're a couple couple dollars and for doing uh trim and stuff and they're they're a bristle fairly cheap or to be used with um i think they they say it's a glue brush or something they make a really cool brush for doing foliage. Uh, I have this here. This is a foliage brush by uh, Dynasty. And they have uneven bristles. And they make really cool. And they're stiff. So being that it's nighttime, uh, your trees are going to be Kind of on the same bluey black side or if it's a uh, root closer to you you could go into more of a, a dark green like a black green type of thing so let's make up 
I'm going to get another palette here. I'm going to take this black that we had here. And that, a little bit of blue in there. Gonna wipe some of that off of my brush. I don't want it really thick, and you want it splayed. And what you do is you can do the edge of your tree line in the distance. So all along the hill here, you can take it down a little bit, and just it's basically generic shapes of pines. And you just kind of dab and just make a, a fairly, um, what would you say, random tree line. You don't want them all the same height and um, the same width. Some would be bushes. Some would be trees, some would be uh, whatever trees you have in your area. Think about it. But I like to just put a few in here. A little water on my brush. So you want, and you want them dark because it is nighttime. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna be seeing too much detail on them, really. I want it fairly dark on the bottom. Okay. And this is has to be done before you do your snowman gets a little bit harder to do when you have to work around things. I'm just cleaning my brush off. Now I want to take a smaller brush. So I have my round here, same color. And now you can put in a little bit more structure. So maybe it would be a little bit more of a, you'd see some of the pine trees, a little bit of the limbs, that type of thing. Maybe you'd have uh, different types of trees, uh, maples, you could put maples in or whatever tree is in your area. I just kind of squiggle things. <laughs> I, I think I'm just going to stick to um, evergreens, like cedars, that type of thing. Uh, I'm going to turn off overhead light. Maybe you can see that. Do you want me to go in, a, a zoom in a little bit for you, or is it okay? Let me know. So I, can, I can zoom in. That's no problem. If you want to see a little closer. You 
can put stuff in the background, a little uh, lighter color if you want. Maybe bigger trees. little forest whatever you want in the background really um, just use the very tip of your round brush just lightly is what I'm doing you can make some trees in here. Sometimes you'd see if it's a forest maybe the trees are dead and they just have these little sticks left on their trunk. A lot of times you'll see that in the wild. But you got to put this stuff in because it it really gets really complicated if you try to paint around things. So I always like to do this first before venturing on to the other stuff. Let's lighten this a little bit for you. There. Hey, Kathy. Okay, so there's our little tree line. Okay, so I'm going to dry that and then we're going to put these little guys on. Okay, just thought of something while I was doing this. Being that the moon is behind, behind all of this, there's going to be shadows cast. So let's put some shadows in. So we're going to take the same color. I got water on my uh, brush this time. And wherever your trees are, you can extend them out a little bit. It doesn't have to be uh, exact. But just give them a little bit of shadowing on that snow area. Just a bit. I'm just going to dab some of these blotches off. There. And I'm going to dry that again. Hey, Kathy.
So now let's put these guys on. So I have, where did I put it? Where did I put my paper? I have a white tracing paper I think will probably work. So I'm just going to put this on. And I want my guys right about there, I guess. And I'm, I'm just going to put on... Well, I guess I could put the tree, part of the tree on. You don't have to put everything on. If you can, if you think you can draw it yourself, by all means, do it. Um, we'll just draw in this. I'm not going to put the faces on because I want to do the bodies in white. So there's no point in putting all the facial features on yet. Same with the hands, that type of thing, because they'll be covered with white paint. So just put on where the bodies are, and you can put your own uh, hands and facial features on, or you could just put this back on after you've done that with uh, darker graphite paper to trace again if you want. I'm going to put where the scarf is, I think, and his hat. Because I'm not going to paint around stuff like that. It's a lot of more work when you do that. So you can just put in the main objects that you need to put in. Scarf. His mitts. I'm going to go around his mitts and scarves. This guy's <laughs> getting squashed. He's got lots of lumps and bumps. He's getting compacted. Let's see if it works. Lift it up. Yeah, not bad. The last one was a little bit light, but I can work around that. All right, so there's where my um, guy's going to go. Maybe I should put a tree in, though. Let's see. Right about there. So the star's going to be there. And the tree will come down here. that there okay so let's put these cute little snowman in now there's snow so they're going to be basically a very similar color that we did this in so we can make a little bit more of that up again i'm going to use a smaller brush though because it's smaller areas that we'll be working with. So we had this, and we had a bit of blue. Mixed in with that. And a little bit of, of that Payne's gray, just to gray it down. We won't don't want it too bright. I'm going to make it just a little bit whiter, though, so just a smidgen bit. Okay, I'm going to take some of that off my brush. 
So we're going to use this. We'll add highlights and shadows once we put this initial um, base coat on. So you can base coat all your snowman with this one color. And you can use whatever brush is comfortable. Uh, this is a round. Should be almost a smaller brush, I think. It's a little bit chunky. Oh, if that's any better. It's got a better point. Okay. So use the brush that you're comfortable with. It's uh, the right size brush for the right area, size area. I know some people say I only use big brushes for everything. Not everyone can do that. Um, just because someone does it doesn't mean it's right for you. So, um, the only time I'll use real big brushes if it's a big area. So, like I said, um, brushes, big brushes for big areas, small brushes for small areas. Hey, Carol. We're doing uh, a tower of uh, snowmen. So they're they're on the job. Their job is to put stars on the trees. This is my own drawing, or creation, or whatever design. <laughs> Just thought it, I actually had put most of this drawing together last year and forgot about it and then I was looking through my sketchbooks and came across it again and I thought oh yeah I should do that before it spring <laughs> What's everyone doing? He's busy with Christmas shopping, or is there, are you all done your Christmas shopping? I'm done, thank goodness. I don't have a lot to get though. So the only thing I have left to do is making um, a few things, um, goodies, candy, that type of thing. Yeah, it would look awesome on fabric, too. You could do really cool stuff to it. Put a little uh, beads and different stitches. You could make the trees. That'd be cool. I still haven't. I'm going. Um, I'm going to <laughs> one day when I uh, find time to sit down. Although I'll probably be needing stronger glasses by then to see the needle. But I love um, fiber art. I just love it. Um, I've always been attracted to it. But, and I would like to put it in into my art also, like into my paintings in some way. So I love that mixed media quality that it gives. I 
I think I did, I've done a couple um, with fiber art in the memberships, but I'd like to do more. It does take time. I'm just cleaning and arranging so I can finish up a quilt. Oh, awesome. I love quilts too, but nope, I'm not going to go down that road. I got <laughs> way too much as it is in art supplies. And I know how addictive it can be for material because I did have a lot of material before I moved here and got rid of it. Because I just wasn't using it. I used to do a lot of upholstery. And um, pillows, curtains, that type of thing. Not necessarily um, clothing. But I did clothing when I was younger. But um, no, just did a bunch of. different uh, drapes and that type of thing for the houses I lived in and for people. Let's see. I'm trying to see that this guy might have to be redone in another color. So you can't really tell where he is. I might have to redo this one. Let's see, that's um, that's that guy there, and I think he goes around like that. Yeah, I enjoy more the fiber art side, not clothes. But I do enjoy hand stitching and quilting. Next year I will be doing more fabric painting and stitching. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Where's his little face? I guess it's in here somewhere. There's little mitts there. And he kind of gets chunky. There. This guy. Uh, oh, now I can see the marks from the pencil. I'm going to make this a little wider on the bottom just so I can see it. Now that I see where those marks are. Like that. And... This guy, his little rolls. <laughs> I think that goes like that. We'll see. I might have to go in and repaint some of that, but I think I got it. Uh, let's see, that's his hand. That's his head. And I think this comes around like this. Like that. All right, I think that's the little guys. I think I'll take this off the paper now. There's what they look like. I 
think I'm needing a smaller brush. Let's see, is this going to be just to put in some of these details? Well, there's that brush. I had it upside down. Uh, let's see. There's small brush. And there's a good one. Okay. So what I want to do is dry that and we'll put some um, lighter areas in the center or not the center on the outer edges because the, the moon is shining. So it's going to glow around the outer edges of the snowman. So now I'm going to take some of that white, just white, I have, and I'm just going to um, put it on the edge of my brush. And I just want to lighten some of those areas. So right around the edge of the snowman, just a little bit of a glow. So I just keep the um, one side of my brush with the white on it. The other side's just water. And that way it uh, just gives it a nice, not too bright, and it kind of takes it and evenly um, makes it a gradation when you do it this way so you don't have to fiddle with it too much More, a little more water on the tip of my brush. Just on the very edge. I need a little bit more. Just to bring that color out. It's kind of hiding in the bottom here just because the, the snowman's very similar in color. So just bring that white out a little bit more on this one. Just so that he shows up a little bit. I have lots of rolls. You just have to keep loading your brush. You get white all the way too far. You can always, um, before it dries, just get some uh, water on your brush and clean it. 
see, that guy, what's that? You can always add more to. Just wait for the uh, one layer to dry. So all these all these snowmen get the same um, highlight. that. You got any questions? Put it in caps so I can see it. It's pretty straightforward though this one. Uh, most I think everyone could do this one. It's uh, fairly beginner easy one for everyone. Ah, have a great day. I'm loving this. Take Lucy for a walk now. Okay, Devin, have a good walk. A little bit stronger on there. Gonna make this one stronger again. in there. So you just keep doing it until you get the right brightness that you want. Right there. This guy needs a little bit on his face here. A smidge. That's the guy that's not facing you. This guy's back turned. Like that. A little bit more on this guy, I think, needs it. Like that. All right. Okay, so now we got that done. So now we can put some shadows in. So we're going to use the same blue, but we're going to add a little bit more of a darker color 
of blue to it. So a little bit more of that blue. Uh, I think I'm going to have to make some more white. And then add a little bit of black to it or Payne's gray, whatever color you have, or a darker color. And that's going to be our shadow color. So the shadows are going to be um, right under where all the little snow parts are, where they attach. So you can just not too much water on your brush. It was a bit much. I'm just using the chisel edge of my brush. Now he would have a little bit under his hat on the back of his head there because the hat would be um, casting a shadow. And this guy, he could have a little bit under, just on the base of his, of his head there and under his scarf. beside it and then wherever he's attached to something So I'm just putting very little on my on my brush. on the scarf line just a bit so yeah you'll have to uh, figure out if you need it darker or lighter uh, let's see this guy that's um, that's part of him this guy's got lots of um, ripples <laughs> he's kind of squashed so he's uh got a little bit of uh a little more creases and stuff going on um This guy, I'm going to put a little bit on the tip of my brush. So just minimal amount. It's not hardly anything at all. Uh, let's see, that guy. So there's his belly. Might need a little bit more in there. Like that. Okay. Now we can come in and put a little bit more later. 
where it's really dark. There will be another area that will be darker than that. Okay. So, it's looking pretty good. <laughs> They're cute. I'm going to put a little bit. I'm going to get my bigger shader brush. So this one here. I'm going to just dip my corner in. And I'm just going to take it. I need a little bit more water on my brush. Just going to take it out in front of this snowman. Because he would be casting a shadow on the snow. So you can take a little bit on your brush and just Sweep that out in the shape you want. You could do a shape if you want. It's up to you. And just bring it out. Okay, we'll let that dry. So we'll let these guys dry and we'll start the tree. So the tree uh, is going to be a little bit different than what we did the other trees. So we're still going to use the black and a little bit of the um, blue. But this time we want to add a little bit of green to it. So you can either add yellow to your blue. So I'm going to just... Um, this blue and the black. I want it dark. And I'm going to get some yellow or gold. Here's um, this one. Raw sienna will work. Just put a little bit, just a dab. Don't need much. And this will turn it a little bit on the green side, but darker. Yeah, a little more black to it. That's good. Some water in there. The reason why I put water in it is so it'll flow off my brush a little easier, easier uh, because this is acrylic artist grade in um, it's a little thicker now you want a script brush when you're this is what um, I made this tree more I don't know what you call it uh, whimsical <laughs> Now, depending on the script brush you have, uh, this one is, let's see if it's going to do it. Yeah, no, no, I think I want a smaller script, something really thin. Okay. Sometimes the longer ones work better. You have to find the right consistency, though. So if you don't have the uh, the right amount of pigment and water on your brush, it won't flow off your script liner um, the way you want. So let's see if this works. We want it kind of scratchy looking like um, You can follow the uh, the way I did it in the traceable if you want. Trace it. Or you can make up your own. I put a little more black in there, I think. More water. So I want it fairly dark. But 
I still see a little bit of the green in there, but it's dark. And you could take a marker and do this too. Whatever is easier for you. Now we can put a little bit of snow on this one too. But we have to put this in first. So as you get down to the bottom, it would be a little bit thicker as far as limbs and stuff. For this one anyway, it's not necessarily though, as far as um, a wild in the forest, a lot of times they're bare on the bottom. But I'm going to put this one with a bunch of stems and whatnot. Kind of sketchy looking, I guess you could say. We'll look. Uh, I just thought it was cute. And we'll put snow on it and all that. So don't worry if it's not looking exactly the way you want it. So we'll put snow on there too. Uh, I had it about maybe a little bit more. A little bit longer. I had it to about here, I guess, in my drawing. Okay. We'll let that dry. And while that's drying, let's put a few things on our snowman. Now I'm going to have a top hat on this guy. So I'm going to just do it in black. So this guy's going to just have a top hat. And just because the um, The, the background's kind of a little lighter than the black I'm using. It'll be noticeable, but I will put a highlight on the hat too. Because we got to remember that it's glowing from the moon. So we will have a little bit of shine you don't have to put a top hat maybe you want um i don't know some kind of a different hat a straw hat maybe or Earmuffs, whatever. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll give him a red scarf. Red and gold, maybe. Let's see. Put some red here. 
just a smidge of red. Now red is transparent, so a lot of times you will have to put um, a base of white down first or pink um, and then go back over it once that's dried. So we'll just put this pink in. And then we can go back over it once this is dry and, and put a nice bright red in. Okay, I'm going to turn this around so I don't put my arm in it because more than likely I would. I'm going to give this guy a red hat too. So he's going to have a little cap or knitted hat. And a scarf's going to be red too, and then maybe, I don't know, polka dots on it or something. Let's see. You can make yours whatever color you want. And we'll put little tassels on here too eventually. We'll just put the scarf in for now. What else? Yeah, this guy down here can can have a, a scarf also in red. And that way we have the red going through more than just one area. You could also put red bells on the tree if you wanted to. You could put red presents under the tree. All kinds of things. You could also have a, a silhouette of uh, Santa going across the moon. <laughs> Uh, these little mitts I'm going to do red. Let's see. This guy? Yeah, this guy has mitts. On. Like that. And who else had mitts? This guy, I think, had mitts. Um, let's make... Okay, this guy had mitts too, and they were... We can make those black, though, I think. Let's make those mitts black, just to bring the black of the hat down. So... His mitts were, oh, just the one right about here. And it went down like this. Now you can draw yours on um, or trace it on again with the traceable. And then there was a little bit of uh, showing right there.
<laughs> Thanks, Lori. They're fun. I, I like doing these. <laughs> you know, you can make them look so funny, you know, with different expressions and all kinds of stuff. All right. So let's take some of that raw sienna again that we had. And I'm going to darken it with a little bit of that black. Let's get another brush here. So I'm just going to take this black. I want a dark color. And let's use this color for their arms. Or we could actually use let's use a paint marker. We can. You don't have to use the uh let's see what I got here. Hmm. Ground somewhere. Brown. There we go. Okay, I have a brown here. these guys. Let's take a look at this. Okay, this guy here. Now you can put yours in with the traceable or you can wing it, whatever you want. So he has his little arms coming out like this and he has little knobs on his elbows, of course. Just make it a little thicker at the, inside here. And then this guy looks like this. And we'll make it a little thicker and maybe some branch come out over there. <laughs> and this guy, He's holding on the on to his belly of this other guy. So I'm gonna put little knobbies for his elbows. And then we'll add a little bit of a branch, kind of a claw. <laughs> Like that. And this guy is sideways. So his arm comes like this. And then this here, just bring it down like that and just curve that a little bit. And then this guy here, his arms right here and he's holding this guy's butt. that mm, 
This one. Uh, Nobbly. <laughs> and then this guy has his arms like this. Holding up the star. We're trying to hold up the star. So his arm kind of comes out like that and then they don't have to be exactly the same size because they're sticks it doesn't have to be anatomical correct right <laughs> I think I got them all in. Yep. All right. So I'm going to keep that. I might need it yet. And we need. Hmm, Let's get a black out and an orange for his, their nose. Okay, and gold. Their noses in. Let's see if this works. I have to get my other one out. This one, I think, is almost done. Yep. Throw that one out. Orange. So there's this guy. So he just has his little nose here. Like that. He's not facing us. And this guy. Has kind of a broken nose. <laughs> And this one is kind of, he's had his fill. He's kind of looking, okay, enough is enough, guys. Come on. I'm done for the night. He, this guy's holding his breath because he's got all the weight of these guys. So he's ready to... fall apart. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Let them those dry. And some black for um, their eyes. I guess I should do white first. Hmm. What do I want to do? Eh, just do black, I guess. Okay, so this guy uh, just put his little, little eyes there. And I'm just, I, actually, I think I'm going to do their mouths with a pen. Uh, I want to put little buttons on 
are pieces of coal though. So they have their coal. And this guy, I think his his face is going to be with marker because it's a little easier. And we'll put the little coal buttons. And this guy here is a little bit of coal on him. He's getting squished though. And this one, has really had it. I can put his eyes in though, like that. And then put the rest of the eyes in there. I'm gonna just put You see the edge of the uh, uh, let's see. Let's straighten this one up a little bit. Like that. And I think that's it for that for now. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight on their noses here and there. A little shine. But you could do that with a uh, uh, colored pencil too. So you can get a bright, either a white or a yellow. Let's try the yellow, see if this works. Might not. No. That's the only thing about acrylic paint artist grade. It's shiny, and it's not going to take your colored pencils. That's why I don't like using them all the time. So I've got a little bit of a lighter color of... Um, orange kind of a peachy shade hopefully it works well, it hasn't even been primed yet let's see there we go so I'm gonna put just on the on the tops their uh, noses like that and I have a sharpie pen here that I keep for doing this type of work um, when you're using this type of pen you need to scribble off on another piece of paper because a lot of times it'll wreck your pen so I just want to put a little bit of a circle <laughs> on their um and his mouth I just had a smirk like that nothing nothing crazy and let's see I think I'm gonna put a little bit of shadowing and where his cap is and some lines down showing the ribbing of the hat like that I'll show you in a minute 
And then I'm going to just do a bunch of I'm going to put a little bit of a dark line underneath here where his hat is. I'll show you. There. See? Just a little bit. Nothing crazy. And then this guy, he's having a really hard time. His eyebrows are like... He's, it's like torture. <laughs> and this guy, he's looking up. Oh, I forgot to put his eyes in. That's okay. I'll put. He's looking up. And he's got, I'm going to give him the little. Pebbles in his mouth, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then this guy's going to. Blow a gasket because he's got all that weight. And I'm going to put some lines where the the little sticks are because it would be a little bit darker in there and then the snow might be coming out like pushed out when you put them in there like that so there might be a little bit of a bulk sitting beside it like that and what else what else um do I have all the faces on now I think so well, maybe maybe let's put a little bit of a Dig it in, holding on. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit of shadowing on these these guys too, um, just on the one side of his, the underside of of the branch, under on his arms. Just to give it a little bit of shadow. You do whatever you want. You could um, really detail these out if you wanted to. It doesn't have to, but I, I like detail. That's just my thing, but it doesn't have to be yours. It would be just as cute and awesome as is. But I like it. I'm 
that. This guy. darker in there. Okay. And then I'm going to take a blue. If I can find the right blue. might work. We'll see. Just where mm, I don't know if I want it. No, I don't. I might put a little bit of gray in there maybe with paint. Oh yeah, I was going to make the scarves polka dot. That's, that's what I was going to do. So, white, and I'm going to also um, put a little bit of a highlight on the top hat. Okay, so let's see. I was going to make these polka dots. that and so he's a polka dot scarf let's see what else we can put uh stripes on this guy's hat i guess that maybe some long Frill, or whatever you call them, like that. And um, I guess we could let's do a little bit of a stripe on his. scarf here. Like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of a shine on his eyes. Some of these guys' eyes. And maybe on the coal and like that, a little bit of a shine. And you, mm, I don't know, should we, I could put a little bit of a highlight on these um, I don't know. Let's see. Rail on the yeah. not bad, I guess. Those little elbows. Like 
like that. that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, let's, where did I put that? This guy needs a little bit of a shine on him. Oh, I missed this guy. All right. All right, so let's put, I'm gonna make the star. So the star is gonna be right here. Like that. And I'm going to put a little bit of snow on the tree, just, just to brighten this area up a little bit. So, and then we'll put a little bit more on the snow areas also. So let's get a, um, a bristle brush or, let's see, something that we can, I don't want a big amount, but... Mm, we got here but I want to have control of it but I want it to be thin what can I use uh, well let's use this one let's see how we and I just want the same color so the white we don't want it white white um, not at first. We want a little bit of that um, bluish color, especially on the bottom part of this tree. So I'm not going to put it on everything, but some of it. Because he's, they've uh, basically. taken the tree and bent it so they could put this star on so it's shook off that's what we could do it shook off some of that snow that was sitting on it so I'm just going to put a little bit of this in and then we'll put um A little bit of snow falling off of it maybe that would look kind of cool I need some more white and a little bit have I got enough blue in there mm. no more blue smidge in my bit 
bit of snow in there. Now I will brighten it down here, so don't worry. Gotta make sure my brush has got all that blue out of it so we can put the brighter white in now. So just white. And we'll just add a little bit here and there on one side, a little bit more than the other because the side that has uh, it's facing the moon more would be a little bit brighter color. So leave some of that um, blue that we put on the blue snow. Just add a little more of this color on uh, this side. Think of the, the shape of the tree where you would be seeing um, more of the snow color would be on you would see it a little bit on this side too because some of this would be um, I'm going to put a little bit back I don't want that too bright because this would be kind of shadowed by the shape of the tree also. It would have some, but there would be a lot of shadow in there. Okay, let that dry. Now I'm going to take my... Liner or there, my um, flat shader. I'm going to take some of that blue again, but a little bit more on the blue side. I want a little bit um, darker blue. Uh, don't forget to put the gray in it though, because you don't want it blue, blue. And a little bit of water on my brush, more or less, it's going to be a um, a bit of a shadow cast by this tree. So underneath it would be darker. And then I'm just going to bring it out. Kind of, it's very sparse, so you can do the same thing. Just make that um, shadow effect of the, the tree, like that. You got to remember the shadows, right? Uh, let's see. Is that... I'm not sure if that was... Oh, I guess it was. Okay, so let's brighten this area up a little bit with some white. So maybe the moon is casting a little bit of a pathway down here. Be a little brighter. Like that. Now, if you want, you could put some snow on these 
back trees here, but they would have to be fairly dark. So you'd want um, a lot of that blue and the black. Very dark. Let's see. You just put a, a little bit of that in there, here and there. And just add a few, the biggest, tallest ones, maybe. Um, don't have to get too crazy about it, but just put a few in there where there would be maybe some, you can see some of that snow. Like that a little bit. Okay. And then of course you still have the shine of the, the moon on these trees too. So you could add a little bit, just a bit of a lighter blue. Just to want uh, kind of, we'll see, on just a few of the edges. Not a lot, just, just a bit, because you can get carried away with this too. We'll see how this looks. It might be too much. I think I'm going to leave it, so I'm going to take it off. Or, rid of most of it there yeah we'll leave it all right um i'm gonna make this a little bit darker in here though right under him i think he would be same with little areas where it would be really dark right where those areas are Connecting. Just you can add just with a very edgier brush. Like that just to darken that up a little bit in this one too. Like that. And then I'm going to put a gold marker on this white, or the white that I made the star. Let's make it gold. And I put the white on because the gold will show up better. And I think that's it. There it is. These guys are a little... <laughs> but they got the work done. I think it turned out cute. I like it. So I hope you give it a try. And if you want the downloadable, it is available to all my members on Patreon and on YouTube. And you can find it in your um, community page. And it is only $3.99 or $2.99, $2.99 a month. And that includes all past two years worth of downloadables. So check it out. Um, you can follow the links in my channel page 
I will put the links down below shortly and uh, I hope you give it a try because it's a lot of fun. It's not that difficult and I think it's uh, easy enough for a beginner to do. Um, so hope you try it out and uh, show it on Instagram if you do. I'd love to see it. It's um, Kathy Arbor or paint with Kathy Arbor, hashtag paint with Kathy Arbor, and I'll be able to see it. So enjoy and have a fantastic weekend. And uh, remember, take time out for you and do something creative, whatever that may be. It's very important this time of year because you don't want to have a meltdown. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys later and uh, see you on Tuesday. Bye for now.